Hey guys, so I wanted to do a video on what's the very first thing you need to do if you're looking to start a billboard advertising company or if you're just looking to build a billboard on your own property, whether it be a digital billboard, a static billboard, anything like that, what's the very first thing you should do? And that is research your zoning code, your sign ordinance in the city or the county where you're looking to build at and make sure they're allowed to be built in your area. Because more times than not, you'll find that the the area you're looking to build at is actually completely um, closed off. So they've closed down the ordinance. They're not allowing any new billboards to be built in those areas. Uh, the billboards that are already built in those areas are grandfathered into the ordinance. So the way you check on this is you go to your city or county website you can research your zoning code, research your sign ordinance, and most of the time they'll, what I do is I just scroll, scroll straight to the list of prohibited signs. And uh, billboards are also called off-premise signs. So they'll have a list of prohibited signs and you can find out real quick if billboards are prohibited in those areas. Um, if you don't see billboards listed under the prohibited signs, they're either most likely they're either allowed in industrially zoned areas or commercially zoned areas or both so commercial would be a little bit more restrictive zoning so if they're allowed in commercial most of the time they'll also be allowed in industrial so what you can do is once you find out that information um, then you'll you'll also have some other regulations like uh, you might have to be 250 feet away from residential areas and you might have to be a certain amount of feet away from schools, from playgrounds, from churches, from um, other billboards. Most of the time it's 500 feet from other billboards, but every city and county is a little bit different. You might have to be a thousand feet away from other billboards. So um, then you'll also want to research your state regulations as well. Uh, most of the time, your state regulations will have to do with um, closed highways. So the only way that you can get on there is by a on-ramp or off-ramp. Then they're going to regulate the distance that you can be from a ramp. Most of the time, it's like 500 feet or 1,000 feet. You, you're not able to build a billboard uh, that close to an on-ramp. So uh, you want to research all of that. But even after that, you know, you might have... Um, square footage regulations as well so a a total um a total lot so say you have a commercial lot where billboards are allowed and you've got some commercial buildings on that one lot uh, you may have a total square footage of signage that's allowed there say it's 300 square feet well if you've already got 300 square feet of commercial signage on a building or a freestanding pole then you, you don't have any room left over to build a billboard or if it's nothing there, uh, you might be able to build a 10 by 30 billboard, so that'd be 300 square feet. But if somebody wants to build a building um, and put a sign up there, there's no more room in there to build to put a regular sign for a business. So you also have to, um, you know, you also have to deal with that. One little um, way I figured out to get around that one is you can just survey off a half acre, like where the billboard would be, and then you can get a fresh 300 square feet there. So it's a lot of cool little uh, tips and tricks you can do to get around um, some of these uh, regulations to where, you know, someone might have gone through and said, oh, well, it's already 300 square feet there, so there's no way we can build a billboard. But they didn't think about, you know, 800 bucks or 1500 bucks to, you know, just survey off a half acre. Still going to be in the same guy's name that owns the land, and then you've got a fresh 300 square feet that you can build a sign there. So um, even if you meet all of those regulations to where uh you know you do have you you do have a property that you can't build a billboard you know you also have to make sure there's already not a billboard there so that's going to be your your other biggest problem is any spot that's a really really good spot most of the time is already taken so you kind of you have to figure out how can i make a you know a b location most of the a locations are taken but not all of them but um, how can I take a, a B location and make it really good? And, you know, one way that you can do it is 
if there's a, uh, a billboard that say it's a property that's zoned, has all the right zoning, everything checks out. And, um, you know, somebody might've came along and offered the guy, however much the, the guy who owns the land to build a static sign there. So say they offered him 200 bucks a month or something like that to build a static sign there. And, um, the guy's like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Well, you can come along if it's a, if it's a good location to where you think you might can build a digital there, you can offer them quite a bit more than that to build a, a digital sign there. And he might go for that. So, um, you know, I'm, I think I'm gonna do another video on what to look for, for a digital location and what to look for, for a static location. And, um, you know, how to determine if you should build a digital sign there or a static sign there. And, uh, should it be single face, double face, all of those, uh, all those different scenarios. So I think I'll do a follow-up video on once you do have your permits, what should you do then? But uh, you also, you know, you also need to check for other obstructions like signs, overhead power lines, trees in the state right away. Um, trees are a big issue where I'm at because you can't cut trees down that are in the state right away. So the piece of property between where the road is and where the front property line is of the property where you want to build the billboard, you, you can't cut those trees down. Um, it's a big fine if you are caught uh, cutting those back or cutting them down. I think you can only cut up to like two inches of a branch. So a branch that's two inches thick is all you're allowed to cut back, which isn't much. And the only way that you can do it is you have to hire a certified arborist to come in and declare that the tree you're looking to cut down is either deceased or dying. And if it is, then you have to fill out this form, do this whole letter and fill out, um, turn, in a, turn it into the state with a fee. It's like a non-refundable fee for them to review your case. And then once they review your case, then they still um, decide if, you know, if they're gonna approve it or not. So you could do all that and they still not approve it. <laughs> so, um, you know, you definitely want to check on that. Make sure it's clear, clear line of sight before you, um, before you get too far into it. But uh, you have to be, like I said, certain certain amount of feet away from overhead power lines. If it's low voltage, it's not really that far, ten or fifteen feet. Uh, if it's higher voltage, you got to be further away. But um, anyway, once you find out and you think you do have a good. Uh, a good spot then you can get on your GIS website which is also a city or county website geographical interface system and that'll show you all the different parcels for the city or county that you're looking to build in and then you can actually select just the zonings that they're allowed in so if they're just allowed in uh, industrial zones you can just click on the industrial zones and filter everything else out it'll show you where the industrial areas are in the city or county then uh, you can zoom in on it. You can click the overhead view, bird's eye view, and uh, you know see where those parcels are. Try to determine if there's already a billboard there. See if there's you know a four lane road. Are they near a stoplight? Are they going towards uh, any retail areas? That's the things that I look for. And um, you know you can also get on Google Street View and uh, go down the street on uh, Street View. Try to determine what kind of areas you're working with. And if there's no other billboards there, you know, you can contact the, the landowner and see if you can work something out for leasing the property. And I'll do another video on how to do all that too. But um, anyway, that's the first step to building a billboard or starting a billboard company is the first thing is just making sure you can actually do it in your area. So um, I know one, one, the very first permit that I uh, got approved I went through all of the regulations, the state regulations, the county, uh, city regulations. This was inside the city. And uh, I said, you know, as far as I can tell, everything checks out. This is a great location. So I went to get my permit and um, they're like, oh no, you, you can't build here because there's a, there's a creek running through your property. And the creek is considered a wildlife preservation or something like that. So you got to be 250 feet from a wildlife preservation. I was like, well, you know, really? <laughs> so anyway, I went back, I tried to figure something out and I was able to move the sign far enough away from the wildlife preservation to where 
you know, I went back to the zoning guy again. I was like, okay, you know, this is where I'm gonna put the sign. It's gonna be this many feet off the creek. And um, he's like, oh, well, you still can't build it because there's a there's a house on the property. I was like, really? This is like a 30 acre in zoned industrial, like I three heavy industrial property. It's like, where's the house at? He's like, well, it's on the very backside uh, of the property. And I was like, I just thought it was all trees back there. I was like, let me go check out what kind of house we're dealing with back here. So, you know, I leave the meeting, I go back, I check out this house and it's a old dilapidated, like wooden structure from who knows how long ago. It's got trees growing up through the windows, trees growing through the roof. It's uh, been abandoned for a long time. Looked like it should have been bulldozed like 20 years ago. And so I took a, took a bunch of pictures of it and I go back to the zoning guy again. And I'm like, man, this thing right here, is this, this is what y'all are calling a house? He's like, yeah, because it's a residential dwelling owned the property, even though it's zoned industrial, then the, uh, it's, is we always have to take the more restrictive zoning. So technically you can't build a billboard there anywhere on the property because that house is there. And I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. Y'all are killing me. So anyway, long story short. I had to go back like four or five different times. I got denied like four or five different times for this permit. I finally got it approved. I think he finally just got tired of dealing with me. <laughs> so he finally approved the permit and uh, thankfully I didn't give up on it and I just kept thinking outside the box with different creative ways to do it because uh, it turned out to be a great location. So even if you get denied the first time, um, you know, uh, you know, keep going back, keep thinking outside the box and try to figure out a way to to make all the stars align. I'm actually, I try to, to make sure, um, you know, all the permits are approved. If I'm, if I'm going to lease property, I try to make sure all the permits are, are approved before I even contact the landowner because um, that's a whole separate process. And if you go through that whole process, you know, he's expecting you to start building the sign. And then uh, if you don't even, if you run into a snag with the zoning office, then, um, you know, you've you've done a whole lot of work with doing the lease and everything and your permits aren't even approved. So even if you think they are approved, try to um, verify with your zoning department so they don't throw something out of right field, like a house on the very far end of the property. Uh, because, you know, one thing is, and I didn't realize this before I got into billboard advertising, but, you know, there's a lot of people that are not fans of billboards and zoning departments or some of those folks. So they're, they're not exactly going to go out of their way to help you get a permit approved. If anything, they're probably going to throw a lot of stuff out of left field to uh, try to not approve it. So, um, you know, the thing is, you know, although they're 100% by the book, you know, they still have to go 100% by the book. So if the book says they're allowed in these areas and in industrial zone areas, you know, they're still got to approve your permit if you uh, prove that it is a, a good location. So anyway, all that to say, uh, check on that stuff first before you, you get too far into it because you want to make sure you can actually build a sign in your area. Uh, if you have any other questions at all, feel free to reach out anytime. You can give me a call at 434 six six five four eight three six or shoot me an email robert at southeasternsign.com look forward to hearing from you soon thanks